Hi, in uh, this episode I'm going to try and do something that actually is pretty hard, and that is to explain something that I just barely understand myself. So bear with me. Uh, on social media I hinted on a contour line placement, uh, label placement uh, function uh, that uh, was appreciated uh, on social media. So. I thought that instead of just giving you the style, uh, I would try and explain what it does. Because if you can wrap your head around the functions I use, you will be able to do a lot with them. So, first of all, I have a, a layer with contours uh, that are labeled. Uh, nothing tricky or complex about it. And usually this works fine. But in some cases, you want to have absolute control over where the labels are placed. And uh, to control that, I have a label lines layer that will be used to draw lines uh, that cross the contour lines where I want the labels to be placed. So for the contours, I can, instead of letting QGIS decide where the labels are placed, I can control that with the geometry generator. So by checking in this uh, placement tab, by checking the geometry generator, I override anything that uh, QGIS uh, calculates itself with a, a, an expression. So before we go into the expression, I would try uh, would like to try and explain some of the functions here. So first of all, I made this drawing uh, that I used that to hopefully explain what the aggregate function does. So the contour lines is this layer here. It has a number of features. Uh, each feature is a line feature. And for each feature in that layer, we run the expression in the geometry generator. So in this, let's call it the parent layer or the parent feature. For each parent feature, the entirety of this expression is being run. If we want to use something from a different layer, we use the aggregate function. And if we think about this layer that we uh, use in the aggregate function as a child layer, some things might make more sense. Uh, inside the aggregate function, anything we do here uh, has the focus on this child layer. And if we want to compare anything here with the feature in the parent layer, we need to address it as a parent. So if we take a look at the code, uh, this is the function that is actually being used. So ignore the rest for now. Um, we run this aggregate function for each feature in the contour layer, and we tell the aggregate function the name of the layer that we want to address, the child layer. We tell the aggregate function what we want to aggregate. And in this case, I want to collect geometries. So we tell it to collect. And what I want to collect is the intersection, the part of the contour line that uh, intersects with a buffer of my uh, label placement layer. So I will buffer each line in the child layer and I will check the intersection of those with the lines in the parent layer and the result is that intersection. So the intersecting part of the uh, contour lines uh, will be collected and, re and returned. This function here, the aggregate, is a bit complex and costly. 
So it will take a bit of time to render a layer if we run this aggregate function for each feature in the contour line layer. So first I run an if statement that use another intersecting function that is intersects and the difference here is that this only tests if two geometries intersect. If it does it just returns uh, true and if it doesn't it returns false and that is not as costly as the intersection function because that need to calculate geometry. So it's more or less the same we compare the geometry of the contour line feature with the aggregate from the child layer uh, and we collect the entirety of that those geometry geometries and test if any of them uh, intersects with the feature in question on the contour layer. If it does, then the uh, second aggregate function is run. If it doesn't, it just skips ahead and does nothing. So this uh, first if statement and intersects uh, is just a way to uh, make the entire expression more efficient. <clears throat> so I've pasted in the expression here and I have changed the label position layer variable to the actual name of the uh, label lines layer and uh, for it to work I need some geometry in that uh, layer as well so let's edit it and create a line a start here something uh, like that perhaps remove it so it renders again and there we go uh, uh, you can see here that I have no symbols uh, I don't need any symbols for this but let's turn it on so you see where the line is and make it a different color So you see where the line is. And let's do another line from here. And move it around so it updates. And uh, we can also edit the lines. So add. A vertex like that move this one to here same like that update now I can turn this off so we don't see it so this is the way thus that uh, the geometry generated for the label placement in the contour lines work by comparing it to the control layer the label lines layer uh, let's just add one more and even if it doesn't show you can still edit the placement by editing the geometry in the control layer or the child layer I don't know if uh, this was clear enough for you to understand. Uh, some things that you can use to uh, control this, uh, the width here is uh, the, the generated segment that is used for placing the label. If you want it to be wider, you increase the number. Uh, you can also, let me see, use this label overrun settings. Uh, the standard is no overruns, uh, 
no overrun. And then uh, if you have a very short generated line that is collected, nothing will show up because the line is too short. But if you allow overruns, it can still work. Uh, hopefully you have a, a little bit better uh, understanding of the aggregate function and it really helps me to think of it as a parent and a child uh, situation uh, between the layers and uh, the code I used is really not that complex you have it right here in uh, the video and I will try and find a way to place it in uh, the description of the video uh, or link it somehow if you want to use the code itself and um, see you next time